Hey, Brad, 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 Brad. Hey, Brad, 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 Brad. What day is it, Brad? What day is it, Brad? It's Wellness Wednesday, everybody. Woohoo! Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Let's kick off this party. We're going to get the party started because here we are. Welcome to the show. It is uh, the Infinite Solutions Nightly News. It's Wellness Wednesday, and we have special guest Brad Robinson on the show this evening. And I'm so happy and grateful to introduce you guys to Brad because he is like a superstar in so many different arenas. He wears multiple hats, and um, he's just really an awesome person. So let me just tell you a little bit about Brad. Brad has over 25 years of experience in the health fitness and wellness industry. He's an expert in several styles of martial arts, training, nutrition, multiple group fitness classes, yoga, personal and life coaching, and he's a former Marine. Thank you for your service, Brad. He's also an avid entrepreneur whose business, Kai Energy and RPM, focus on coaching individuals and organizations to create healthier lifestyles and work-life balance by reducing stress, decreasing pain and improving performance, increasing physical activity, creating balanced nutrition plans, mitigating health risk, and saving money given the focus on preventative measures, which is so important. Brad is a creative writer and visionary program designer who has developed his own health modality called Kick Therapy, Kai's Energy's integrated continuum of kinesiology, and he's currently finishing his first book, One Small Step. Brad, welcome to the Infinite Solutions Nightly News. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I just want to give it back to you, you know, for setting this up, for doing what you do. You know, I wholeheartedly believe in the vision of Infinite Solutions and what it's going to be for everybody in our community and beyond, not only for the, uh, the people who are guests, but everybody whose lives is being touched along the way. So thank you so much for doing what you do. Absolutely. That's what it's about. It's about our community and empowering our community and focusing and helping our small business owners and our entrepreneurs and our local communities, especially during this time. So it's the time to come together and support everyone. I say together we can transform. So, all right, let's jump into this because I'm so excited for Wellness Wednesday. It's such an important facet of our life and, and, and it's applicable to everyone. So tell me, Brad, why are you passionate about health and wellness and what got you started in this industry? Well, honestly, Carrie, I, I got into this industry when I was 15 years old, I started high school and I was thin as a rail. I mean, I was five foot five, 80 pounds. So uh, <laughs> my brothers used to pick on me. They said that I, I was so skinny that I could hula hoop through a Cheerio. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> they said, uh, yeah, I look like a, like a, a toothpick with an olive on top. Uh, so uh, I, I said, you know what? I got to do something that, you know, kind of, build myself up, build my self-esteem up, my self-confidence. So I got into working out, you know, going to a gym, you know, I was so, it was so weak. I could barely even push the bar up three times. Right. And, you know, just, just getting into that, I saw how, you know, it was a ripple effect into all the other aspects of my life. As I, as I changed the way I looked and felt and built more confidence, you know, I got more comfortable speaking to other people when I was in school. I was able to stay more focused because I learned how goal setting worked with exercise and how I got the results. So I learned goal setting and how to take and implement those same uh, processes and philosophies into my everyday life. So then I said, you know what, I want to, this is helping me so much. I want to help other people, you know, because it, it's not just about a, a training type thing that I started Working when I was 16 years old, started working at a YMCA. That was my first uh, training certification and my first job in the industry. And so, like I said, 25 years it's been. And so I'm humbled by, you know, the introduction there. It's kind of I'm like, who's that person she's talking about? But, it, you know, I take for granted that it's been you know, almost three decades that I've been doing this and, and helping change lives, you know, so. You know, I'm, I'm humbled by that. I really appreciate it. Uh, I, I would, you, you did say one thing. I'll, I'll correct a little bit. You said expert in several styles of martial art. Um, I, I, I will say that I'm a, I always try to keep beginner's mind 
in especially martial arts. And so I'm a student of all these martial arts. But, um, you know, definitely, you know, I never would want to consider myself an expert in those things. But, uh, you know, they say the, the, the guru hat on. I don't like the, the guru hat. But um, definitely my life was changed by the idea of Kaizen. So I was a, I was a, um, a student, a youth exchange student in France when okay. I was 17 years old. And I started studying judo. And I learned the philosophy of Kaizen, which is the Japanese concept of continuous improvement. And I that's love that. Really I have to pause because I, I absolutely, I live and breathe continuous improvement. I love it. And I love that's it. when we connected. I said, yeah. wow, that's so cool that your company is called Kaizen Energy. Kaizen Energy. Yeah, yeah. And it's just such a cool concept. So tell us more about that. Well, you know, that, that, Kaizen philosophy, it's its the opposite of innovation. Okay. Innovation to me means that we're going to come in and we're going to change all of these things all at one time versus the Kaizen approach is sequential progression. It's A to B, B to C, so on and so forth. And that actually works, especially it started out in manufacturing. Yep. It's moved over into the banking industry, moved over into healthcare. And I've been applying it with health and wellness. Mm -hmm. Then I learned that you you actually get better results from people when you take that uh, sequential progression approach. You know, the analogy I like to use, I was speaking with Carrie the other day and I said, uh, the analogy I like to use is a, a rubber band. If you had a cold rubber band and you, would, you were to pull it too hard, too fast, what happens? It breaks, right? So but if you were to warm that rubber band up and gradually stretch it out, you're able to stretch it a lot further. And that's the way the human mind works as well. That's right. Yeah, that's right. It's it's kind of taking the low hanging fruit in manufacturing that came from the Toyota production system yeah. and which actually came from Ford. Um, yeah. So that's a long, long story, but it's it's everyday evolution. It's it's involving, you know, the people and it's small steps, low hanging fruit. What's one what's one step we can take today to get a that's little right. bit closer? to our goals and then you just so you don't bite off the whole chunk you just bite off little pieces so that's okay. so cool and you also can speak five different languages is that true yeah that's a, that's a passion of mine like like i said i, I studied uh, french and spanish before i lived in france for a year i was actually the first uh, two language student at my high school and uh, then when i was in nice. france i started i started studying italian studied some german when i was there and then went to college studying uh, Portuguese when I was in college. So um, yes, yeah, it's, it's definitely a, a passion of mine, foreign languages. Talk, talk some German. <laughs> I just want to hear it. Das ist eine kleine kleine Welt. Nice. So, <laughs> <laughs> I just said uh, it's a very it's a small small world, and it really is, especially with uh, technology now. The world is getting smaller, so this social distancing has created virtual connections. So we're getting the world really with technology. I have met so many amazing people through this, whatever, I don't know what day it is. It's been two months, two and a half months. And you and I actually connected just through social distancing and being yeah. able to connect virtually. So it really is incredible. Um, all right. So you have an upcoming book and that's mm -hmm. so exciting. And in your upcoming book, you talk about the seven links to your personal wellness chain. Mm -hmm. Share with us kind of, you know, why you started writing the book and kind of what it's about and then get into the teaching part of it. OK, sure. Um, first, I, I want to tell you a little story to kind of get into how I, I've applied that Kaizen philosophy with my clients. Um, and why it works so well. Mm -hmm. So I had a, I had a client named Josh. This was many years ago. This was back in 2002 and Josh was a little over 400 pounds, about 420 pounds. And Josh was at his wits end. Uh, he owned a computer business. This is when I was in Columbia, South Carolina training. And Josh had seen the dietitians. He had seen personal trainers, you know, one dietitian, he said that had told him you need to eat five small frequent meals throughout the day. Mm -hmm. uh, the trainer said you need to work out five to six days a week, ideally six days a week. But see, Josh, he ate one time a day, 
which was two pizzas that he ate at night. <laughs> I tell my mom not to do that. She always, she waits all day long and then she eats at night. And I'm like, listen, you need Your to metabolism is getting, is getting crushed, right? Yeah. So, so he ate two pizzas every night. And I said, I, when I finally met him, I said, John, you eat the same thing each night? He's like, what do you mean the same thing? There's so much variety with pizza. You can go with the vegetarian, the meat lovers, you can go with in between, ham and pineapple, all that. He said, there's variety with pizza. Mm -hmm. So, Long story short, so he said that the the personal trainer told him to work out six days a week. You, you, you're you on the edge of metabolic syndrome. We got to get you moving your body. You got to get this weight off, kind of trying to scare him, right? He said the, the dietitian said, you, you got to eat five to six small meals a day. You're killing your metabolism. So that's that cold rubber band that you pull too hard too fast, right? It's too much change. Yeah. So after about three days, his feet and ankles were so swollen because the trainer told him he needed to be on the treadmill for 45 to 60 minutes every single day. And that he was going to be doing strength training three times a week with him. So after day three, his feet and ankles were so swollen that he couldn't even go into work. He was demotivated. Wow. He threw the trainer's number in the trash, told him to never call him again. And he only lasted about four or five days with the nutrition program. Yeah, for so sure. We had a mutual friend. We were introduced and, and I said, okay, so I heard his story and I said, hey, okay, Josh, here's what we're going to do your first nutrition goal is going to be to eat a pizza for lunch and a pizza for dinner. He said, what this, this nutritionist guy just told me to eat two pizzas. He was already eating two pizzas. I said, that's all you have to do. I said, your first exercise program is going to be to walk to your next door neighbor's mailbox and back. He said, I can do that. I said, I know you can. So I saw him a couple of days later. He did it. He was motivated. I said, okay, so your step two in your nutrition program, we've got to introduce some breakfast. No, 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 no. I can't eat breakfast. It makes me sick. Can't do that. I said, okay, can you drink something? He said, yeah, sure. I can drink something. I said, all right, great. So we'll start you out with a protein shake. And then I'll have you do a pizza for lunch. And how about half a pizza for dinner? Can you do that? He said, I can do that. I said, awesome. All right, let's go. Hit your second step for your exercise program is going to be to walk to your third neighbor's mailbox and back. So I saw Josh a couple of days later, right? So we're five days into this program. Josh comes to me and he's ecstatic. He's bouncing off the walls. And I'm like, whoa, Josh, what's going on, man? You, you seem pretty excited. He said, he said, I am. I've lost two pounds this week already. And you told me to walk to the third neighbor's mailbox. I walked to the fourth neighbor's mailbox. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> Josh was motivated. So if, if he was told to work out six days a week and he worked out three, you think he was more motivated or less motivated? He felt like a failure because it, it, it was too high. It's too high. It's, it's, it's the mm -hmm. cold rubber band. He yeah. was told to eat six times a day. He's only used to eating one. It's too much change. They had to take that small step approach. Fast forward two years. Josh had lost over 200 pounds, had become nice. a personal trainer himself, but and he had sent me a letter. I'd moved from Columbia to uh, Virginia Beach area, and he sent me a letter and was just going on and on and on about the the people's lives he was changing and making a difference. He still had his computer business, but somebody else was running it. He was doing what he was passionate about and helping other people, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I feel like this is something I, I stumbled onto. I felt like one of the greatest purposes in life that we can have, a great guy named uh, Stephen Scoggins told me this. He said one of the greatest purposes in life that we have is – to help the person that we used to be. Yeah. To that we used to be. Absolutely. Because you spend you know, your whole life learning and growing and evolving. And that's exactly it. So you can you can be a mentor for someone else. And I just I love what you said about, you know, just changing people's lives and helping people become a better version of themselves. 100%. It's so important and we need more people to kind of open up to that. I say open to the portal of opportunity and, you know, kind of uh, allow yourself to transform. And especially now, now is the best time to take advantage of, of this type of opportunity. Carrie, you said a great word that I've been using for years with my PT because people look at PT and it's personal training, right? Well, some people look at it, they think PT stands for personal torture. 
right? I always <laughs> said that PT stands for personal transformation and because transformation is very different than change. A lot of people are afraid and they, they have an aversion to change because they see themselves as like change is like moving from a circle to a square or a square to a triangle, right? You're, you're losing an essence of who you are. Transformation is more like just adding more dimensions to yourself. It's more like moving from a circle to a sphere or a square to a cube or a triangle to a pyramid. You're, you're getting more depth. You're getting more of yourself, but you don't lose the essence of who you are. But transformation is a great word you just said. Beautiful. That's awesome. All right. So tell us about your book. I'm excited to hear about this book. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, so the name of the book is One Small Step. It's the Kaizen Secrets to Personal Wellness Mastery. So it's mastery. It's not, you know, it's not the personal development thing. You know, everybody feels like they're, they're a weak. They have weak links and they're trying to strengthen those links, right? It's not dabbling. We got to get away from dabbling. So many people just dabble into different things or they try something for a short period of time and it doesn't work. So they quit, right? Mm -hmm. So that's not what mastery is all about. So right. developing yourself and the different aspects of, of your life in order to develop personal mastery, because all of these things are interconnected. They touch on each other. Yeah. So in, in that book, you know, I talk about there's eight different aspects to a human being and to their, and to their personal mastery that we're trying to develop. Right. So it's, it's your home, it's your finances, your art or that creative expression that everybody has, whether you're a writer, a singer, a gardener, a cook, whatever. It's everybody has that creative expression and we're mm -hmm. unfulfilled when we don't tap into that. It's your business or your job. It's your health, education, relationships and your spirituality, which ties it all in. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So um, I wanted to talk a little bit today and delving into more of the health aspect. Okay. We'll talk about, you know, you had mentioned, I think you have some, maybe some, uh, some uh, slides or whatnot you can show as I'm, I'm talking about these seven links to your personal wellness chain. Mm -hmm. So the first link to your personal wellness chain is integrative medicine. Integrative medicine is, it's the physicals, the assessments, the physical therapy. It's, it's different ways of finding out what's going on in your body right now. You have to find out what's going on in your body right now before you can see what needs to change. What is it a postural analysis, things like that, all of these different things. So it's that first aspect is integrative medicine. And why is it integrative medicine? It's because it's using, it's integrating all different types of medicine. I don't say complementary medicine or alternative medicine because alternative medicine kind of gives the idea that it's, something separate than what the mainstream good thing is. And some forms of what's known as alternative medicine has a much longer history and a much more successful history than, you know, traditional uh, Western healthcare, like nutrition, that changing your nutrition can revolutionize your entire life. So Absolutely. What I think is so incredible is the ancient, you know, um, Chinese, all these ancient Eastern cultures have kind of known <laughs> how to cure and heal ourselves for 2,500 years. Okay. And, and I've just, you know, come to realize the power of acupuncture, the power of herbs, and there's so many different meditation. I mean, yeah. so many incredible, um, uh, holistic ways of healing that we are not educated as much in our Western culture, which I think needs to change. And that's another reason why this is so important to teach our communities, these alter, well, I say alternative, whatever you want to say, but holistic or yeah, um, holistic is a great word. Mm -hmm. yeah, getting to the root cause of the problem, instead of just addressing yeah. the symptom, you get to the root cause of the problem and find out where it's coming from so that you can actually stop it and prevent it right <laughs> absolutely i used an analogy one time with a client i said you know it's you know fighting the symptoms is like seeing one of your trees and the leaves on that tree outside are starting to turn brown yep. so you go out and you take a uh, can of spray paint and you go out and you paint them green mm -hmm. so it's a problem right now they're green 
<laughs> of course not, right? You got to get into the roots. You got to find out what's going on in depth so that you can give more health to that tree. That's right. So moving right along, we talked about, so number two, that second link to your personal wellness chain is structural integrity. Okay. So what is that? That's the alignment of your body. Okay. So the alignment of your body, how you hold your body, how you hold your posture so that all these things are lined up, you know, proper alignment would be your ear splits your shoulder down your hip, knee and ankles. So that straight plumb line that goes down through the center of your body. And so there's different modalities that will actually help put the body back into alignment, whether it's osteopathic medicine, chiropractic mm -hmm. medicine, but you'll learn that all of these things are just, it's a, it's a myopic view. If you imagine, if I'm looking at this painting on the wall behind me and I've got my hand covered up and I'm just looking through that small little hole in my hand, I'm mm -hmm. going to see a very small aspect of that painting versus looking back and seeing how all of the different points connect and you see that you see the greater picture right so that's that's the approach that i've taken over, over the years um massage and body work is tied in with that structural integrity right i've been a massage therapist since 2008 and so helping people to remove pain and increase their levels of performance see there's that multiple hat again we we missed the massage hat. therapy <laughs> yeah, massage therapy you know tune in like later on i'm going to say you know a call to action Make sure you're taking down that email address or my phone number. Take down that email address. Send me an email. Anybody who's watching, whether this is live or you're watching the replay, send me an email and I'm going to put your name onto a list that's going to give you some opportunity to you know, maybe get a, a free version of that book or at the very least a discounted version of the book. And then you're going to be entered into a chance to win multiple prizes coaching, massage therapy, uh, invitations to online workshops, and then also uh, invitate what one person's going to win two tickets to a mastermind live event. So uh, I love it. I'm going to email you. I want to be in on that. Come on, let's do it. Let's do it. We'll have fun. So uh, number three, number three is fitness. So fitness is a big umbrella that covers cardiovascular training, resistance training, flexibility training, all of that. And I, I, I used to teach a lot of uh, continuing education courses for uh, the National Academy of Sports Medicine. So we use what's called the optimum performance training model, the OPT model. We move from stabilization to strength on into power. OK, and so there's a lot of different phases. We move through that. Uh, the fourth link is nutrition. Ah, such a visceral subject. So many people. And and I mean, politics, so, nutrition, and religion. So, <laughs> I, I was telling you before we went live, I've been eating a bowl of ice cream every night before bed. Who else has been, you know, not following our diet since we've been in this quarantine state? What else is there to do? Absolutely. I go for a walk, but then before bed, that's that's my guilty pleasure. I eat ice cream. So, what kind of advice can you give for people like me, Brad? <laughs> Honestly, you know, don't don't feel bad. You are not alone by any means. You know, I, I've I've done the same thing myself. Don't feel guilty. You know, so we don't shame ourselves. Um, but there are some things that you, you can do that when you feel that trigger, mm -hmm. like at night, you want something cold, you want something sweet. I've had times where I was uh, coaching and training uh, girls who did fitness and figure competitions. So, of course, they would still have those same cravings at night, but they, they couldn't really take in all of those extra calories or carbohydrates or sugar or what have you. But there's ways of like you know, freezing crystal light, for instance. You can freeze crystal light, make crystal light pops, and it's next to no calories. You still get the cold. You still get the, a little bit of the sweet, and it curbs that. And you just saved three, four, five hundred 500 calories, depending on how big your bowl is, right? You can even put in some strawberries, some fresh strawberries in that crystal Ooh, light. True. Pop. Sometimes for me, when I want something a little bit sweet, I'll just have like some uh, frozen fruit itself, just by itself. Just suck on a, uh, a frozen strawberry or some frozen blueberries. You know, they get warmed up a little bit in your mouth and you can eat them. And it that also, great idea. Great idea. My 13-year-old son, he'll just take a bag of fro frozen fruit, walk around the house and just pop. You know, he ate a whole bag of frozen mangoes one day. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Better, better than cookies, I guess. Well, nutrition is a big umbrella as well. You know, that includes food, water 
supplementation, which fills in the gaps where our nutrition falls short. And that's also cleansing. So helping to cleanse out the body. So all of that I cover in, in nutrition. Uh, the fifth link is recovery. So this is an umbrella for your rest, recuperation, your deep breathing, your detoxification. All of these things is in your recovery. You know, I, I say I say that the the tide comes in and the tide goes out. So many people, especially type A people, are all go, 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 and they never want to rest. And so there's so many benefits to having that rest and recovery, that recuperation, even from just a mental standpoint, just a mental standpoint. We, our brain waves are, are on beta brainwave level, levels all throughout the day. And then maybe we go to sleep and we hit a little bit of delta. But when you go in, you have some recovery time, you're able to get into slower waves. And that's those alpha waves. And that's where your creativity is activated. Mm -hmm. That's where your intuition is activated. And then theta, Carrie mentioned meditation. Mm -hmm. There's theta brainwaves. It's even slower. That's some powerful, powerful things can happen when we activate those data brainwaves. I follow Dr. Joe Dispenza, and I love the work that he's doing in proving yeah. how meditation can actually heal you. Um, just the power of our thoughts. I'm reading the placebo effect that he wrote as well um, that shows that it's it's insane how much the statistics favor the placebo in certain circumstances where nothing else changed but their mindset and they are, they heal themselves. So 100%, 100%. Speaking of mindset, that sixth link, that sixth link is centering. That's where the mindset comes in. That's your visualization, your affirmation, your meditations, laughing, journaling, devotion, whatever it is that you do to center yourself, right? It's instead of the, all the go and go breathing, the, Breathing, centering yourself, doing breath work. It's great. Um, we talked about Kaizen earlier. We talked about brain functioning. So one of the reasons that that Kaizen approach works is I wanted to tell you the way neuroscience, I want to get a little bit a uh, little, little bit nerdy with you here. So I apologize. I love for it. A moment. So <laughs> the way the brain works is when we see this large looming goal, what it does is it activates our old brain, that amygdala. And when that amygdala is fight, flight, or freeze, right? It's a stress response. We feel stress when we see that big looming goal. So it shuts down our frontal cortex. So we no longer make those logical, rational decisions. We're all thinking emotionally. We're thinking survival at that point. So why, why, do, why do we eat the chocolate cake? I'm stressed out. I need the chocolate cake. Why do you need chocolate cake? Because you're stressed out. Because for whatever reason, we've got, it's activated. We're triggered and we're no longer in the present. We're no longer thinking rationally and logically. We're back to six years old and we felt these great emotions coming because we felt closer to our grandmother and the, the smell was coming from the kitchen and everything. So we, we have the chocolate cake. We need to change our emotion. We need to change our state. And that's what we feel is going to do it. Like I said, it's not a logical, rational thing we do. It's just innate. It's ingrained in us. So we got to think, how do we break that big looming goal down so that we don't activate that stress response? Mm -hmm. Bite sizes, those small steps. Good stuff. Well, your seventh link is, you know, Carrie and kindred spirit being a coach herself. This is you know right up her alley. So this is coaching and counseling. So a coach is some, someone who can take in whatever arena, whatever one of those eight aspects of personal mastery I talked about, somebody who can help you in one of those aspects to close the gap between where you are and where you want to be. They close the gap. They're the bridge. So Carrie's a bridge. I'm a bridge, you know, with the health and wellness industry and whatnot. So that's that's your your seven links. Yeah, that's life wellness management, that's stress management, somatics, basically teaching you how to, how to control your body. But sometimes, you know, if you, if you're not in the market for, you know, hiring a coach or whatever, sometimes it's just reading. Sometimes your coach is somebody you got from the library. Now the book can't look back at you. The book can't, you know, ask, ask you questions or speak to you directly, but it's a start. It's a start. 
I say to everyone, I think every everybody needs a coach. I mean, yeah. even, even if it's just your best friend, this is mentorship. So even if you can't afford to hire a personal coach, just having somebody to inspire you, empower you, kind of talk you up when you just want to give up. You know, I don't want to go live tonight yeah. on the nightly news, but hey, you kind of have to do it. You know, those little, little things. Um, but just accessing that, having a partner and believing, having that accountability partner is so huge. You get um, more, you get results faster when you're able to have someone behind you, inspiring you, empowering you, giving you the tools and the tips to be successful. 100%. So it's very important for sure. 100%. And, you know, you've mentioned mentorship and, you know, there's a, there's a big difference between what our best friends are going to tell us and what a mentor is going to tell us, you know, our, our best friend is going to say, Oh, you know, you, you, I love you just the way you are. You don't have to change anything. I love you just the way you are. And that's great. A mentor is going to say they love you too much to let you stay where you are. You yeah. Know, they want to help you move forward. So that's, it's good to have friends and it's also good to have some mentors in your life. Hey, I got to show you something. Look at this. So we have a comment from one of our viewers and guess who it is? It's my son. Look uh, at yeah, he's, he's, he's coaching me in the background behind the scenes on YouTube. Isn't that amazing? My 13 year old. Hi, okay. sweetheart. Thank you. Even, <laughs> if you're, even if it's your 13 year old son or daughter, you need to have somebody there kind of inspiring you, telling you you're doing great. I had to, I had to pop that one in there. <laughs> inspiration is beautiful. You know, and I love that inspiration because, you know, he, he's, he's giving you something that's bringing life from inside of you. Cause you know, I, I told you I'm a linguist. So that the root of that word inspire, it means yeah. to breathe into. Mm -hmm. So motivation, it comes from the outside, right? Inspiration comes internally. So it's like to breathe life into another person. So thank you for breathing some life into mom there. That's great. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> All right. So Brad, that was amazing. Thank you so yeah. much for sharing those tips. And um, that is the seven links to your personal wellness chain. Brad has a book coming out so you can contact him. His call to action was, hey, reach out to Brad and he'll, he'll enter you into a contest. Is there anything else, if there's, if there's one piece of advice that you can leave our viewers with in this time of, okay. you know, the gyms are closed, all right? I have a friend of mine who's just pissed off because yeah. Planet Fitness is not open. <laughs> so completely can, right. Yes, for it's sure. So we can get out, you know, I mean, we can do things outside, but what's, what's some advice that you'd like to leave our viewers with at this time? OK, so when you're trying to make change, you know, we talked about you know small step changes. And like Carrie said, you know, there's there's a thousand things that you can do to move your body and get active, you know, just body weight training or going for a walk outside or anything like that. But when we get motivated and we want to make a lot of changes, we tend to set goals and we tend to set a lot of goals. We have these all these things that we want to change now. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the innovation approach. So give you some research. Research showed that when people set more than five goals, their adherence to those was less than 10%. Yep. When they set three to five goals, it was a 35 to 40% success. Mm -hmm. And when they had one to three goals, it was a 70 to 80% success rate. That makes sense. So that just goes to say, like when you're trying to, when you're trying to make some changes with your health, Think of what can you do over the next week? One, two, three things, max, max. And I would suggest having one thing. What is your one thing? You know you what my one do? thing is? What's your I one thing? I'm not going to eat ice cream at all for the next week. One thing. I'm cutting out ice cream. Focus on your one thing. It's <laughs> easy when you just focus on one thing. What is your one thing over the next week? Everybody out there. And then take action on that. Get that under your belt for a couple of weeks and then move on to your next thing. That's the way you're going to take that Kaizen approach to slowly start to make those changes, make those slight edge changes. So listen, listen, if you're golfing and you are sitting there, you hit a golf club, you barely hit the ball. 
and then you angle the golf club, you barely hit it. The balls are essentially side by side. You know, Carrie, Carrie and I both live on a golf course. You know, we, we, we can tell you like the, the golf analogies, like there's so many ways you can go. But if you hit those balls barely, they're side by side. Now, if you take that out 100 yards, 200 yards, 300 yards, you're on the complete opposite side of the golf course. That's just a great metaphor for making those slight edge changes, those slight edge decisions that you keep angling so that you're going to end up being a completely different place in your life than when you started. Yeah. And, and they, it's, it's, it's best to just keep it, you know, if you do a 30 day approach, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to stick to this for 30 days because it takes, what is it? 21 days to create a habit, 90 days to transform. I think it is. Yeah. Um, so it's just that repetition and staying with it. And again, just don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on your goals. Don't give up on your dreams. Just one baby step, one baby steps every single day will lead you up that mountain right. faster than if you try to run it in all one day. <laughs> That's right. One small step. Thank you so much, Carrie. Appreciate yes. the time. Thank you so much for um, joining us on the nightly news. And if anybody wants to contact Brad, um, his information is here. It's been at the bottom of the screen, but you can go to B Robinson at K Kaizenergy.net. And if you want to learn any more information about the infinite solutions community or being a part of the community, you can contact me at the email address below. Thank you so much, Brad and everybody. Thank you for tuning in for wellness Wednesday. I wish you a blessed week. Take care. Thank you. Bye.